Kim and I, as y'all, most of y'all probably know, we took off last Sunday afternoon after church and drove to Perryton, Texas. And it was after dark when we got up around, I don't know, Clarendon and all that area up in there and north. But we could see these big blinking red lights, you know, out there in a lot of that country. And they were all blinking in unison, you know. It was like, what in the world is all of that out there? And we kind of finally figured out it was windmills, right? It was those wind, wind, wind farms that were, were everywhere up that way. Um, and, and the cool thing about them is, is you know, they, they work. And they work pretty darn good. And they generate a lot of electricity, right? I mean, they, and, and they're powered by wind. the wind, yeah? Can you see the wind? No. 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 Well, how do we know there is a wind then? You see the effects of it, right? You feel the force, you see the effects of it, right? Huh. So, interesting thing. Jesus, many people reject Jesus because they, they don't, they're not, don't get the proof. You can't prove to them that that. God exists first. Is there really a God? We'll prove it. Well, for those of us who do believe, it's kind of, you know, we already know, right? <laughs> we can see the effects of it. We can see his, his hand moving in hearts and lives, like, like the Methodist church, right? I can see God moving and, and, and paving a way forward, okay? Can I prove that? To, no, it's, you can't prove that. It's hard to prove. But his, God's power is all around us. Have you ever gazed at a, as a magnificent sunrise or a sunset or, or just, you know, random cloud formations? As you you know, some of these beautiful days and all the cloud, you know, you kind of look up and it's different clouds every day, you know, out there. Um, is that... God is the most magnificent artist that the world has ever known. And, and the scenery changes every second. You know, I mean, it's not like that's a one-time thing and that's it. No, it's, it goes from one to a new one that's just as magnificent to another one. That's, I mean, it's just awesome. And Paul talks a little bit about this. In Romans 1, he says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. The, through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. And he goes on to say, So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Nobody's off the hook. <laughs> Just because you don't can't prove God. Look around. There's the proof. It's everywhere. God has done a marvelous thing in creation. And he goes on, Paul goes on to say uh, in explicit terms that the faith, faithlessness of humanity leads them into utter darkness and sinfulness. Read Romans 1 if you don't believe it. It's right there in explicit terms, okay? Just saying. Okay. Reveal. There's uh, there's also solar farms up there that we saw. Those solar panels went on for acres and acres and acres. I don't know how big, a, but it was like wow. Kim's always talking about doing solar. I'm like Kim, look out the window. There, there it is. I think she was on the phone or something. I'm like what? There's a 500 acres of solar panels out there. Um, so can you see the power of the sun? Funny thing, it's really not visible, you know. And I remember when I was 14, I went with my church school, Sunday school group to Destin. You know, we, of course, we remember we lived about an hour drive from, from Destin, so it wasn't a big deal. We just loaded up in uh, our, our Sunday school teacher's car. Um, 
trying to remember her name now. I can't remember her name. <laughs> anyway, I spent a few days ago. Uh, went down there to the beach. It was an overcast day, right? It was real cloudy. Of course, they didn't have sunscreen back then. Anyhow, I mean, they had that old copper tone just like grease, you know, that oil you could have put on. I don't know that would have done any good anyway. Well, I stood out there in the water all day. It's floating around. <laughs> You know, of course, I'm fair completed. I was redheaded at the time, you know. And, and I came home and I looked like a lobster, right? I was burnt to a crisp. Seriously, I mean, I was, it was, a, 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 you've probably been down that road a time or two, too. I mean, yeah. Did anybody need to convince me about the power of the sun, right? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I was experiencing it firsthand. So God's power is, is unseen and immeasurable, generally, right? We just can't see God, you know, in the flesh here and now. But God reveals himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus, as this scripture reminds us, is the word made flesh. Remember how God in the beginning spoke and, and, and spoke the world into creation, in, into existence. He spoke. He was the Word. Jesus is the Word, the power of God, the very written Word, the spoken Word. He is the Word made flesh. He became human and dwelt among us to, to be able to convince us hard-headed folks that yes, I, you know, Jesus like, I am God. I'm the son of God. I am here to represent him. And what you see me doing is the same thing God does, right? I am him. We are three in one. Me, the Holy Spirit, and, and the Father. God's word is ageless and timeless, and it is true. <clears throat> and uh, just a little sidebar this denomination is, is a, you know, having some challenges, let's say, based upon how we interpret the Word of God. Okay, that's what it's all about. That's all it's about. So just, you know. Oh, I missed my, that was my, yeah, there we go. That was supposed to be my last one. Okay, <laughs> so I'm getting mixed up on my slides. So you're not the only one doing it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Reborn. So as we came back uh, home Thursday, we saw those wind turbines. You know, we could see them in all their glory, standing out there in them, them fields and pastures and you know cows around them and all that kind of stuff. And some of them, um, some of them weren't working. A lot of them were, but if you noticed, they were turned in different directions, you know, and I don't know if you can, you can set them to do that or if they're just stationary. I mean, y'all may know more about that than I do, but anyhow, there were some that were turned in a direction, you know, where the wind wasn't catching them. I suppose that's what it was, or maybe they're just switched off. I don't know. There might be a big switch down there at the bottom. You can just go flip it. I, I have no idea. Uh, so they weren't working the way they were designed to work. So how do they work? I mean, this is a layman's, you know, real dumbed down <laughs> explanation, I'm sure. Uh, but the wind blows and, and, and catches the, the, fan, the blades of it and causes it to turn, right? And... and, and Y'all know that country up there. The wind's always blowing up there, pretty much from some kind of direction. So when it catches those blades, it, it causes them to turn, and, and lo and behold, somehow, you know, shazam, as Gomer Pyle used to say, it makes electricity. You know, I, you know how's that? I don't know. You know, I don't know. That's beyond <laughs> my pay grade. That's above my pay grade. Right? So, um, Funny thing, in the Bible, the Greek word for spirit, Holy Spirit, is pneuma, pneuma, which means wind. 
catch the connection. So like those windmills were designed to be powered by the wind, so are we. Not a literal wind. We're designed to be powered by the Spirit of God, the Spirit wind, the pneuma that blows in us, that, that empowers and enables us. And how do we get that? By faith. By faith in God and, and through his son, Jesus Christ. When we turn our lives over to God and accept Jesus as our Lord, the Holy Spirit is born in us. We are reborn by the power of the Spirit of God. Does that make any sense to y'all? Okay, uh, then we become empowered by that Spirit wind to walk by faith, not by sight, right? When we're, when we're walking by faith, we're walking in the power of God. When we're, we're, we choose not to, well, we become like one of those uh, wind turbines just sitting out there in the field, not turning. That's it. That's, is that what they were created to do? No. They weren't created to just stand there and look pretty. They were created to do work. <laughs> and so are we. Uh, and, and God chose the vehicle of faith whereby he expresses himself to those who believe. By faith. Right? Let me say something about faith. Faith places all of us in the same place, the same starting point. Regardless of your social standing, your finances, your education, your physical ability, your political power, your position, your number of friends, how we look, how we feel, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, low self-esteem or high self-esteem, whether you're a king or a general, or whether you're living under a bridge. We all are put on the same place with God. We cannot come to him because he's proven himself to us. He showed himself to us. No, because we step out in faith, right? We, we just trust that it's all true, that God's word is all true. And, and we find that in Jesus, right? He is the word made flesh. So, so none of us gets an advantage over any other. God reveals himself through simple childlike faith, right? We have to come to God as a child. Just simple faith, right? Not something highbrow, but just, God, I, I, I trust you. I don't have all the answers. I ain't figured it all out, but I'm trusting you because I believe you are God and you sent your son to show us the way forward. Uh, to those who accept Jesus as God's son and follow him, we, we get the, the marvelous distinction of being God's children. God puts his seal on us and that seal is... <laughs> the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> the Spirit wind. And we're born not of the flesh, but of the Holy Spirit, okay? Jesus talks about in, in, in John, the third chapter, when he meets with Nicodemus, and he said, you must be born again, right? Born of water and the Spirit, you know? And, and many have, have, have come to believe that that born of the water, you know, a physical birth, you know, that comes, you know, the, the amniotic fluid and born of the Spirit, right? Born of the Holy Spirit by trusting in God through His Son, Jesus. So, like the wind turbines uh, of West Texas run on wind energy, we run on faith in God, okay? <laughs> like the solar panels convert solar energy into electricity, God's Word empowers us. Rather than living as the world lives, we live our lives standing on faith in Jesus Christ. We get our energy from God's Spirit who empowers and enables us to walk by faith. As faith walkers, 
we shine the light of Christ into a dark world. As people who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, we influence the world to choose Jesus Christ. I, I got news uh, just a couple of days ago. A good friend of mine, a, a co-worker when I work, worked in the timber business, named Philip Knight, uh, passed away. He was a few years older than me, not much. <laughs> uh, great guy, strong Christian. He and I went to, to Costa Rica a couple of times together uh, on mission trips. I mean, he worked in the youth group at his church and, and uh, the last decade or so has worked as, as a children's Sunday school teacher in, the, in their church at, at uh, University Heights Baptist Church over there in Huntsville. Uh, good Lord willing, I'm going to go to the visitation tomorrow night. I hope to be able to go. Uh, but what a blessing, you know, to know that, that he is with God now. I mean, his wife just found him, uh, what, Friday morning, I believe it was. Just found him. He, something, we don't know, don't know what happened. But there he was, and, and he had already gone to be with the Lord. I'm happy for him, you know, because I know where he is, and I know the life he lived, and I know that he lived his life empowered by the Spirit of God. Was he born that way? No. He accepted God, and, and his uh, obituary says sometime in, in 1987, I, it, it lists a day like February the 3rd, 1987, he accepted Christ and began, he was born again, was reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. And from that day forward, he began living to the glory of God, empowered by Christ. Was he perfect? <laughs> Heck no. No, I, I, I know he wasn't perfect. But you know what? He kept on fighting, though. He stayed in the fight. And, and, and he didn't give up when he fell off, you know, in the ditch. He got back up and got his feet headed back down in the right direction. Uh, so anyway, why am I talking about Philip? We, we affectionately called him Felipe. His wife was a, a, a Mexican lady. And uh, she was always talking Spanish around him, so she, he wouldn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and around his, you know, her family, they would get in there and talk. And he's like, I don't have a clue right there. They're probably talking about me. You know? <laughs> but anyway, so hey, y'all, that's the best any of us can do: is is trust God, take, let Him guide our steps. And, and roll up our sleeves and get to work and trust God Amen. and let him empower us, enable us to bring him <clears throat> glory. Is any of us can do that on our own? No. We're, we'll be like that windmill standing out there in the field that ain't moving. <laughs> I mean, you can put stickers on it, you know, Jesus saves and all that stuff, and it's still dead, right? It's only when you allow the Spirit of God to, to, to be born in you and to move in and, in and through you and to empower you that you're able to, to, to do anything that's pleasing to God. All right? Okay. We're going to, if you will, turn uh, to page 12. I'm going to just leave that up there. <laughs> Hope that doesn't make you dizzy. All right. Would you turn in your hymnals to page 12? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient servant. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Then would you please go. Thank <clears throat> you.